Hey, what's up guys? We're going to use the UI picker view in this tutorial. So I'm just going to call it tutorial. It's going to be a single view monotouch iPad application. And um, we're going to go into the XIB here into the single view and add a picker view. I'm not going to maximize any of my windows because I am. Um, I can't really see a lot of the window because my resolution is all messed up. So um, I'm looking for picker view right now. There it is, picker view. Okay, and we're gonna add a text area below it and that will be our UI. The scrolling is not very smooth while I'm recording, so it's I'm having a hard time. Text view. Okay, let's create outlets for these things. This will be called picker. I just spelled that wrong. Disre disregard that. And um, this will be called text view. Okay, now we need to define the model for this. On the table view, you're going to be defining the source. Usually with the picker view, you're going to be defining a model. They're pretty much the same. You're defining the data, the placeholders for the data, and how the data is going to be displayed. Basically, just it's the MVC concept. If you're not familiar with um, model view controller, then you got to look that up. Otherwise, you're not going to understand why they've done this. Okay, so let's create our model. So we're going to create a new file, call it my picker model. CS. It's going to extend UI picker view model. I'm going to resolve this, re resize in the UI kit, and Basically, this model is going to consist of a string array, but you can have whatever you want. Just, uh, I don't know, override the two string of the object that you created. You can make some fancy stuff. We're just going to do a string array. And what are we going to call this? We're going to call it fruits. It's going to be a list of fruits. And I'm going to use params for this, like I did in the uh, table view. Fruits. Let's see what fruits. So now we got fruits, a fruits field. Now we're going to override some mandatory methods that we need to implement for this to properly work. Protected override components. Okay, component count. Believe it or not, this needs to be implemented. It's not doesn't return one by default or anything like that. So we're just going to return one. We have one component. You have you can have a bunch of different uh, wheels on your picker view if you want, but we're going to have one. Override get um number. I'm I'm just searching for something right now. Rows get rows and component there we go so we're just going to return fruits dot count length and get title I think this is mandatory return fruits and the row index is specified we're going to use that Okay, now we need to, well we don't need to, but we're going to create a public string here as a auto implement and get set accessor. It's going to be called selected fruit. I don't know why my tool tipping or tool hinting is engaging. Okay, there it is. And we're going to define 
an event. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to have an event that we can hook to for when a new item is selected and when that item selected we have this public property where we can access the selected item. Uh, if you have a lot of data uh, associated with the object then you might want to package it into the object properly or use uh, your own event arguments. In this case we can just use a public property. Okay so events event handler and it's going to be called fruit selected. Let's define the method here. Empty event args. Very good. Now we have one last method to override, I do believe. And that's the selected method. So when a new item is selected, we want to first set the selected fruit property. It's equal to fruit dot row. And um, then we want to raise our event on fruit selected. Very good. Now we have our model defined. We can create a model and then assign it to our picker view. So let's go to the tutorial view controller class. And in the view did load event, we are going to assign to our picker. I spelled that wrong. Actually, we're, we want to actually create the reference ahead of time so we don't have to cast later when we need to access the properties of this model. So my picker model model is equal to new my picker model. We can specify some fruits. Banana orange and apple. Okay, model dot Fruit selected. Just handling this event here. We are going to assign to the text area. So our text view, sorry. Text is equal to going to print the selected fruit on the text view. Okay, now we need to assign the model to the picker. So picker.model is equal to model. All right. And that may all that may be all what we need to do. So I'm going to run it. And we're going to pick the orange. And it says the selected fruit is orange. You pick the apple. The selected fruit is apple. You pick the banana. The selected fruit is banana. And I want to know more about this title thing. So we are going to play around with that. Whoops. Model dot get title. I don't think I need to actually implement this this title thing, so we're going to take that out of there. And I'm going to just run it. it once it uh, once it's finished doing whatever it's doing. Yeah, so we do need get title. Get title is actually what sets the text for the the row, the row or the item or whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, that's how you create a model 
for the UI picker view. See you later.